Hello everybody, let's get started. So on this panel we're going to discuss the early stage funding opportunities for startups in the region with three fellow entrepreneurs that managed to take their companies to the next level through this type of deals. Let's find out together how they did it and please give them a warm welcome to Jonas Kotoy, co-founder and C CEO Device Hub. Marius Turka, co-founder and CTO UiPath, and Andras Kapi, co-founder and CEO AxoSuits. You know the drill. Um, please have your questions ready uh, towards the end of the panel. All right, thank you guys for coming. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Uh, please, let's start with a short introdu introduction about yourselves, your company, and what is the option, the, the funding option you went for and why? So I'll start first. Yeah. Hi to everybody. Uh, my name is Jonas Kotoy. I'm a CEO and co-founder of DeviceHub. DeviceHub.net uh, is an Internet of Things uh, application platform. So basically what we're doing is uh, connecting hardware to the Internet and back to the user uh, via um, real-time communication APIs and uh, web APIs. So we had our pre-seed funding through an accelerator, through the Hubraum accelerator, the accelerator and investment uh, arm of Deutsche Telekom. And right now we're um, in a seed uh, fundraising stage. Hi. My name is Marius Turka. I'm a co-founder and CTO of UiPath. UiPet is an enterprise software company that created a robotic platform to automate manual, repetitive business processes. Um, I've been working with my team for about 10 years now, um, working on uh, various outsourcing projects, trying to bootstrap the company, like many companies back then. And during this time, we developed an automation um, technology that for the last three years, we um, tried to build into a product. And um, we're now one of the main vendors in a new field called robotic process automation. Um, we're a Romanian startup that sells to global uh, business process outsourcing companies around the world. And um, we raised the seed fund, seed round from um, Early Bird, Credo Ventures, and Seed Camp. I'm honored to be here to share this experience with you. Thanks. Awesome. Andres? I'm Andres Kopi, CEO and co-founder of Exosuits. Exosuits is a med tech company building high-powered, easy-to-use, and affordable exoskeletons. Funding. So we started uh, the company two and a half years ago together with my fellow, my CTO, Dorin Hirtze, uh, using the money we had at hand. And uh, later on, we got an angel investment from uh, uh, Adrian Gyara. He's also from Moradia, my former um, classmate. And uh, later on, after... Uh, getting through the MVP Academy here in Bucharest. And uh, also on uh, uh, the previous Hot Web event, we managed to close a seed round, like a, like a bigger seed round. So far, we uh, raised up to 200,000 euros. All right, thank you. So guys, one of the most obvious um, way for a startup nowadays to access funding is through an accelerator. But us as entrepreneurs and founders, what do we have to look at when analyzing multiple accelerators that are out there? How do we choose the right accelerator for our startup? Do I go first? Yeah, of course. So in, uh, in my opinion, first we should look into um, what kind of businesses the accelerators um, usually s support. I mean, if you're an um, Internet of Things business, you don't go to a fintech accelerator, that's for sure. Um, then you should probably look to see what kind of companies that accelerator has uh, accelerated in the past. Mm -hmm. 
And um, also, if you are in, um, I don't know, if you're in Romania, but you think that your customers are in a different uh, geographical location, then you should probably look for an accelerator in that geographical location. All right, so, so we have theme accelerator, we have alumni looking to, f to talk with alumni eventually, right? Yeah. And location. Yeah. Marius, would you agree? Uh, yeah, we don't really have a lot of experience with accelerators. Uh, we are part of the SITCAM family, but they're not uh, really positioning themselves as an accelerator anymore. But um, we, um, we managed to um, take most of the advantages uh, of being associated with uh, a past accelerator, like uh, their, their network, their mentorship, uh, Introduction to investors and um, yeah, many other um, um, reward packages like um, you know, we're building uh, our solution in the cloud, and there are startup programs from Microsoft and, and Amazon that we we benefited from being associated with Sitcamp. Okay, all right. So Andras, uh, I know that you went through MVP Academy, which is actually a pre-accelerator. And how did imp it impacted your decision, let's say, to not pursue a, a classic accelerator, let's say? MVP Academy was very good because uh, uh, at the beginning, we knew that we want to create a cool product, but we didn't know the rest, which is a major part of the venture itself. Uh, MVP Academy taught us how to pitch, uh, how. Uh, what is the mindset of the investors? What should we look out for? Uh, some basic uh, financial planning and so on. Uh, after that, uh, the rest was pretty simple because uh, there was there wasn't any accelerator who was uh, willing to 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 take us in. Uh, even the hardware accelerators like quickly dismissed us because they considered us uh, too ambitious and uh, too specific. Uh, most of the hardware ac accelerators are looking for simple hardware, like an MP3 player, something that can be put on the market like yesterday and they can make a, a high profit on it. And right. we didn't fit any of that, well, not entirely, we, could, we would fit the high, the high profit margin, but no, not the quick uh, time to market. Mm -hmm. so, and after that, uh, we decided not to, um, not to engage in any kind of accelerator. And uh, one of your investors is a business angel, right? And how would you, um, what would you say is the pro, are the pros and cons of working with a business angel as opposite to having a deal with an accelerator, for example? Uh, we are extremely lucky because our business angels all come from, uh, from an IT background. So they understand uh, more in depth of what we are doing, uh, actually, except uh, for Adrian, all of them have experience also with hardware, and um, this is this is an, an advantage. Um, so, would you say it's more hands-on? Yes, yes. Uh, what uh, uh, a startup needs really is smart money. Uh, money just there doesn't help, and also people who. Uh, advertise themselves as very, very smart investors, uh, uh, very, very smart like uh, consultants who want equity for their knowledge. You should uh, avoid them as far like, as far as possible. <laughs> so you had to build on that. Um, I guess you all had experience dealing with multiple, a lot of mentors, and with that, conflicting advices. What would be your advice for the startups out there and entrepreneurs out there? how to deal with this type of situations when you have conflicting advices from mentors. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I had my share of uh, conflicting advices from mentors. I think in, in the Challenge Up Accelerator, where we're currently part of the Challenge Up IoT Accelerator, had like uh, 60 mentors in two days in a speed dating kind of event. And of course, we had conflicting uh, advices from them. But in the end, you do what you think it's best to do for you. And you, you need to, to have confidence in your 
gut feeling. And I guess, and I guess the team really because has an important part in that. The team right? has an important part in that. And usually, I mean, I haven't been alone in this speed dating yep. game. Um, I've been with the, with the team there, but um, in the end, you just have a, a side. I mean, if you if you listen to some of your devices, then definitely you're going to be in one side of the camp, let's say, mm -hmm. and the other mentors are going to be on the opposite side. But that's how life is. Mm -hmm. Marius, yeah, it's a great learning experience <laughs> and. Any kind of any piece of advice or feedback is greatly appreciated. Um, usually, the mentors um, give advice on what you're interested in, so they don't give opinions for everything you're doing. So, if um, you're wondering about um, tips from growing your company or maintaining a, a culture fit into your team, um, they usually give. Uh, relative similar ad advices and of course you choose what fits best for you. So I guess when dealing with mentors, speed dating or stuff like that, it's actually really important to lead mm -hmm. the meeting, the one-on-one -on -one meeting yourselves, right? Yes. Andraj, this is something that you've seen throughout MVP Academy? Uh, the mentoring sessions during the MVP Academy were um, not as strict, uh, not as formal as a, as a speed dating event because we were like like newbies there. Uh, and this was mostly true for the business uh, part. Um, when it comes like to real uh, uh, um, sessions, then uh, first and foremost, always look at the, the background of the, per the experience of that person who is giving you advice and um, try to see if that person ever had like any any real success. Because there are plenty of people who say that they are great mentors, but uh, they failed in every business they tried. Well, failure might be... Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, 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 I know this is, uh, uh, we, we should not say that, but failure <laughs> is not good. There are some false prophets of uh, failure in uh, the Romanian startup community. Don't listen to them. Failure is bad. Try to avoid it as much as possible, work harder, and then you will avoid failure. But don't embrace failure that, oh, this is okay. No, failure is not okay. And of course, you're not going to give names. Um, <laughs> so guys, uh, I've seen teams that went through um, investment experiences, either through accelerators, business angels, investment funds, you name it, and had to take some difficult decisions in the process. Um, now, what was the most difficult decision you had to take in your team, which is associated with the deal you had to make before or after? I think for us, uh, the most difficult decision was actually to uh, raise money, to to go to um, an investment fund because, because we were bootstrapping. Yeah, we were uh, already sustainable, and um, uh, we could have stayed with with a lifestyle business and uh, not go into all this negotiation. And how did you get to that decision? How would you? Because we we realized uh, there is an opportunity, and we need to to step up. And if we are going to to sell to enterprise customers, we're going to to need um, funding to to grow a bigger team than uh, than we are at the time. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, if you didn't make any, you know, uh, difficult decisions, what is something that entrepreneurs are there and startups should uh, expect? Um, actually, there was one very difficult decision to make, and it may sound funny. Um, to decide that, uh, to, to get to the point when you understand that the reason why that money is then the bank account is it has to be spent, it has to be put to good use. So yes, you always have to keep a conservative pro, uh, uh, spending strategy, but uh, you have to understand when it's the right time to make larger amounts of spendings. Uh, yes, it does decrease the length of the runway uh, but it's necessary for the business to, to succeed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yonuts, do you have any input on this? 
I was thinking that uh, the the difficult decision that we had to take because at the beginning last year we we put in time uh, we were also doing outsourcing in a way, and the difficult decision was to leave everything else aside and concentrate on this. This was the difficult decision when we okay. said we were going to take this uh, investment path. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you feel are the most critical um, term sheet points um, when dealing with uh, an investment fund or an investor in general, aside from you know giving the equity for that amount of money? Well, usually there are points where uh, the investor will ensure that you will actually work for that startup okay. for <laughs> one year, two year. So not, not so taking the money and spending on, yes. I don't know, smart so watches. So when you sign that, you should be sure that uh, you are actually going to dedicate yourself to, to, to that. Commit. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marius? Yeah, the term sheet is actually uh, a negotiation, and uh, depending of what you're willing to um, give for for that investment, um, I think the most important point um, for us it took several months to to negotiate the the first term sheet, and um, I think um, the most important points are not losing control of the company too too soon. Um, the the good uh, investors are are willing to to let that uh, to the founders, but um, if you want to to raise too much money uh, and raise your your valuation too soon, and uh, you're going to to give control of the company and for the yep. next rounds, you're going to be screwed. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Uh, regarding on that, uh, it took us also more than six months to get something signed mm -hmm. but uh, here I would like to point out to all those people who haven't received money yet that uh, getting an investment doesn't mean that whoops you get like a 10,000 euro in bank account no uh, you have to make a financial planning what your uh, costs are going to be in the next 6 months 12 months like ideally but the realistically the next 3 months so what will be your cash flow need and uh, what will be deliverables, what will be the milestones, what you're doing with that money. And um, um, in Romania, the angel investors actually like have very, a very, very big heart, but in America, if you don't meet those deadlines, you gradually lose even more shares of the company. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, not that you're funded, um, do you feel it changed somehow in any way the way you're doing business? Um, I mean, team from team to operations uh, to location, probably. Did it change it in any way? Think about the reporting to investors, for example, um, meeting the milestones you already discussed when signing the deal. Well, we're still working on the seed investment round, so I wouldn't be able to say a lot, but uh, yeah. At least, do you expect your you know daily operations to? We expect we totally expect uh, our yeah. daily operations to change. I mean, mm -hmm. gonna have a certainty on uh, the salaries of the people. Mm. Um, our office is probably going to, to mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, for us it changed a lot in the last year. Um, from. Um, so the most important project now is is growing the company. We were ten people last year. Now we are thirty, and we need to be fifty real soon to manage all these operations and and the um, the demand. And now we we can make long term planning, having uh, been funded. And um, also we we are planning to um, open an office in UK. So location is going to change for it's part of the team, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Andres? Um, so the proper location, which we got uh, a couple of months after we raised money, and also our team expanded, which is an essential part of the process. We are only five, so it's a small team, but uh, it has to be doubled 
uh, in the next year in order to meet uh, certain criteria. All right, awesome, guys. Um, do you have any questions? Let's open it up to the audience. Yeah? We have a question here. So, very short question. I was at the pitching event with uh, angel investors from Romania, and one of the founders was prepared to offer 40% for a seed investment. So my question to you guys was, how do you correctly evaluate your startup? Because 40% sounds like a lot. <laughs> At least in the <laughs> early stages, yeah. Yeah. Let's try that. <laughs> I want to say that 40% uh, sounds a lot for an early stage investment. And... Uh, I don't know, there are a couple of ways to evaluate an early stage startups. One would be to compare it with a startup on the market in a similar uh, space that you are. And you should probably be able to, to check it out on Crunchbase or something like that and see what was the valuation for that startup approximately. Then if that startup is in US and you're in Romania, of course you'll have to divide that valuation by a factor of, I don't know, 10. Hundred, yeah. <laughs> hundred. <laughs> um, but then, if you you're really early stage, you have to decide. I mean, you should have some numbers in mind. You should know what's the value that you're creating. Uh, what uh, I would like to add is that no normal investor in his right mind would ever take <laughs> more than I don't know five percent in a seed round because uh, if that investor takes simply takes too much equity then uh, that uh, startup will never get the next uh, round yeah it compromises the next exactly. round definitely uh, mm -hmm. uh, it becomes uninvestable exactly yep. yeah yeah it ruins the cap table and stuff yeah any other question guys no nothing all right well thank you very much guys we can wrap it up it was a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Ciprian. Thank you.